also in there has not. First and goal. Capaletti right up the middle. Jumping in to meet him, Scott Studwell, the rookie from Illinois, who is in there in place of Jeff Seaman. Member team, so the Bulls are in there for the Rams. Play action fake. Man wide open. Oh, what a good move. Number 86, oh, Charles that. Young. We just told you about him. Acquired from Philadelphia. Where he was a great receiver there. And he just came into camp late. Don and wasn't in shape, but he is one of the truly fine receivers in football today. Raphael Septian for the conversion to make it 14 to nothing. And this he does. 8-16 remaining in the first half. And a foggy night here in Los Angeles with the Rams leading Minnesota 14 to nothing. End zone, Dandy. Well, is that, uh, you see, he's just not opened up right now. He knows he's got that speed to like, shoot right through there. Very few guys can do that. He knows how to go. 4-4 four, four for the 40. You saw the speed right there. We'll be right back. Speed right, Don. But also, you see, really comes back in there on Krause. Krause turned all the way around from that free safety position, thinking that Jackson, I guess, was going to go on the deep route down the sideline. The ball was there. Beautifully thrown. Harold. Howard, you'll see, he's coming in there. He's getting some pretty good pressure. Rather than dump it out deep, he sees Jackson down there. Throws that ball. Again, a good throw. One more look. Jackson again. Good defensive play. Well, the effect. Tonight, let's was, look at it again. He was also the one ring that everybody said was too small out of Texas A&M. Wasserman was really high on him, but that ball was just so much under thrown that they really were. He almost had to come back for it. He's 5'9", 180, and carries it like a loaf of bread. That's not, he'll have to learn how not to do that, I would think. 18 yard line. Hayden. Yeah. Once his big fullback, Capaletti, and, but Capaletti cannot get out of bounds to stop the clock. The Rams can do so, however. Down at five. Ball inside the 15 yard line of the Vikings. Hayden giving himself the rollout option. He picks it up. And they'll get the grand timeout, I'm sure. Visited with head coach Chuck Knox. The Rams with the 14 and nothing lead. They could really put the Vikings in a hole with another seven. Hayden with a lot of time. Finds him out of the end zone. Harold Jackson, touchdown. I guess it was too. He caught it, but it was low. He went down there and got it. They're in trouble now. Don, he came all the way from the left side, and the only way Hayden could have got this off was with great pass protection. You're absolutely right, Frank. Look at that. They just they're doing their best to get in there. Marshall is the one that finally got the closest. You see the ball is a little bit under throw, but Jackson does a hook slide in the second, picks it up to six. Look at it again. This is from the left side of the field. He'll cross completely in the end zone. Pretty dangerous traffic in there. The cheerleaders for Buffalo having some bright moments on the day, like this one, late in the third quarter. Greg Coleman punts for Cleveland. The ball gathered in by Keith Booty, second year man from Syracuse. He cuts across field to the left sideline. Look at the blocking in front of him. The Brownies going down as if cut by a dive. And then, at precisely the right moment, cutting back across field, still getting that great block. Loping alone now, but more blocking to come. The final right here, and Moody goes in for the score. 91 yards. That made it Cleveland 20 to 16. In the second quarter, this key play, Brian Sight back to pass. Deflected by the defense. The ball in the arms of Paul Warfield, the practically perfect receiver through all the years. He goes in for the touchdown. And thus it was as Cleveland beat Buffalo 27 to 16. Bray Rivers Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Steelers against the Oilers. Tough physical game. Houston having broken Bradshaw's wrist in an earlier meeting. And look here, Jimmy Young sacking Bradshaw. Bradshaw writhing on the ground in agony and clutching that left wrist with a kind of loose cast on it. But Bradshaw has a way of coming back from injuries, and so he continues in play. Handoff here to Franco Harris. 
fumble recovered by the Steelers, but they played some sloppy football on the day they lost five fumbles. It was a terrible day for quarterback Dan Pastorini. That quick flip picked off by Dwight White on the day. Pastorini, 5 of 15, only 32 yards with five interceptions. White doesn't often get this kind of opportunity, shows his jubilation, and then in the third quarter, the score, seven up. Flip, Bradshaw, the stalwart. Watch him cut back across the field against the grain. Look at the blocking. Look at Bradshaw. And Stalwart goes it alone down the sideline. Touchdown. Pittsburgh went ahead, won the football game 27 to 10, tied with Cleveland for division lead, 4 and 2. Big red cut. And a wild scoring affair. The handoff to Metcalf from Jim Hart. Metcalf throwing a pass to Mel Gray. Good for a touchdown. At that point in the game, the score, Cardinals 35 to 24. It was early in the fourth quarter. And the Cardinals found their offense yesterday with just 45 seconds left in the game. This Wayne Morris, who scored four touchdowns on the day. Big hole, bolts through two tackless scores. The Cardinals win it, 49 to 31. The Cards against the Giants next Monday night. <laughs> Schaefer Stadium, Foxborough, Massachusetts, big game. The Colts against the rebounding Pats. Burt Jones, premier quarterback in the league, sacked by that big New England defense, in this case, Pete Barnes. Burt Jones again, sacked by the fast defensive end, Tony McGee. And so it went all day for the Colts. They could do nothing against the Patriots' defense. Meanwhile, Steve Groden gradually picking them apart. Like here, the quick pass to the big tight end, Russ Francis. He cuts back. There's nobody going to down it. And so the Pats went on to a 17-3 victory. The Colts unbeaten no longer. That's Richard. He went on the third round. Pick because many thought he was too small. Well, look at this. That's just blazing speed. Missed tackles, but he caused them to be missed as we look again. Now, One more time. That's Lahawk, and he missed the tackle earlier. That's the second one tonight. There he breaks open, and you're not going to catch him there. Oh, yeah, run it out. Now, dance on him. He had a 16-yarder last week against New Orleans. He has a 44-yarder tonight. Seption hits the conversion. The Rams are making their fans happy tonight. They roll along, and they are out front 35 to 3.